Hello, this is Luke Ranieri, once again with my father, Robert Ranieri. And this painting in from uh, the year 2012 is The Judgment of Paris, part of the series called Acteon. And Papa, tell us about this painting. Well, we have three distinct units. And you see a female figure here, mm -hmm. and a female figure here. Right. And the uh, male counterpart right here. Mm -hmm. Now, what has happened is that there is an architectural setting. You can see a kind of archway here and a, a sense of that being echoed over here. Right. And obviously there are uh, concentrations of light. You see the orange here is very compelling, if you will, and it yeah. helps frame the rather cool uh, segmented figure. The figure is actually seen as units, as though each, this is the section and there are several other smaller sections. Mm -hmm. And it's the warmth of the, the crossover, whether it's a, kind of a garment, partial garment. And then one has to, once if this is an, a, an intrusion, if you will, or a division idea, then we have more divisions and repetitions of quasi-figure uh, units, whether legs and feet, and all that becomes an interesting opportunity to think of shapes for themselves, even though they're at the service of describing the figure itself. Mm. And then over here, the divisions are a little more modeled or, or softer, if you will, less extremes between the figure unit itself and it's surround, but again, uh, segmented, whether this is a midriff or garment, and then what happens down here is part of a closure because we have a strong, uh, say, uh, design element here, which uh, may be parallel to the strength of that. So you have mm. a lateral or oblique kind of connection between the upper left and the lower right. Right. And then, by contrast, in terms of this uh, review, we have this male figure. It doesn't have a head, doesn't have arms. It has the significant torso because we noticed not only those sculptures from antiquity that are missing heads and arms because they got broken off, mm -hmm. but also there's an essential kind of core activity which the power of the torso expresses. Both the, f the feminine, say, nature here, and the rectilinear and kind of angular formation of muscular uh, structures, which you see from this back view of this figure. Mm. So again, one, two, three. And uh, now, in terms of the depth, one can say, well, this figure is rather statuesque and goes from the bottom and uh, at the bottom out and up near the top. And this is kind of clustered as part as a grouping of the parts of the figure. So the play on two expressions of how the female figure may be presented. Mm. And of course, the male, in terms of the notation, this is a kind of a marking, a kind of graphic, or even a kind of... Uh, linear identification, but you see the large planes or facets of what is the back and the hip area. So this is a very different vocabulary as to what one can say are stereotypical male uh, images or surfaces versus the softer mm. play of the female and the same over here. And so it's really that uh, a, a, a identification of archetypes and then again, back to this, we have almost an arch-like effect here by the combination of the shadow and the torso, upper torso. And here it's done with a more architectonic image, which is separate from the figure, but still it represents a balance of the two parts. And of course, chromatically, the orange, of course, is quite compelling with the highlights on some of the form. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, a softer, perhaps more shadowy view of the female figure. Mm. And again, the sharp, uh, say, chisel marks 
and faceting of the male. So we have a kind of narrative that moves across and back, whether you think of a, a louder, stronger voice and still more, I'll say, aggressive voice and then a softer modulation. So it can be think, thought of in terms of a vocal expression as well as a physicality that is typical of this particular painting. Mm. Thank you, Papa. I'm glad to do it.